Managing non-communicable diseases, a major financial burden for the Ministry of Health. Practical outcomes expected from a six-month-long review of the National Youth Policy and Dr. Carissa Etienne to receive an Honorary Doctor of Science degree from UWE. I'm Idona John Baptist and this is Channel 5 News. Details after this. We begin with the issue of financing to manage chronic non-communicable diseases, which continues to take a toll on the Ministry of Health's budget. The permanent secretary of that ministry says the incidence of people suffering with NCDs has had serious financial consequences on not just their families, but the country. Globally, NCDs continue to make a significant dent in our healthcare budgets. Coupled with this is the emergence and re-emergence of vector-transmitted communicable diseases yearly, and to name a few, dengue, chikungunya, and now Zika. Healthcare financing therefore becomes a global problem as a result of increased demands for services, especially tertiary care. The need for cancer treatment is on the increase and will continue to be and an area requiring lifelong interventions. While the figures may not be startling in your country or in some countries, the cost to treat just one patient is exorbitant. Roy says since scarce resources remain an issue, the region has to team up in managing these conditions. We have four main CNCDs especially cardiovascular disease, diabetes, cancer, and chronic respiratory diseases, and they are by far the leading causes of mortality in the world. They are responsible for 35 million deaths a year, 28 million of which occur in low- and middle-income countries, that's most of the Caribbean countries. In Dominica, the situation is the same as many of our other Caribbean countries, PAHO's country specialist, Shirley Augustine, says management of NCDs needs to be addressed from a financial perspective. All of us say that it is the main cause of morbidity and mortality. But how much is it costing the country? None of us know. How much is it costing the community and individual families? None of us know. Because when people have diabetes and they have hypertension, they end, those, of, those who end up getting complications, amputations, renal failure, they can no longer work, they have a family to support, all of this comes at a cost. People who are admitted to the hospital because of NCDs stay very long at the hospital. How much does all of this cost? So we have to start thinking of it in terms of dollars and cents because non-communicable diseases, they are everybody's business. Just like we say tourism and HIV, now we have to add NCDs to it as being everybody's business. Still in health, as the death rate from chronic conditions increase, steps are being taken to strengthen the community approach to dealing with these preventable diseases. Cancer, diabetes, asthma and heart diseases are some of the common chronic conditions. The Pan American Health Organization has recognized that while these types of illnesses can be prevented, the number of cases in the Caribbean is excessive. For the past two days, civil society, including faith-based organizations and health educators, were being trained on how best to get others to manage their conditions. PAHO launched this regional chronic disease self-management master trainer workshop here, which is being attended by participants from Antigua, Barbados, St. Vincent, St. Kitts, St. Lucia, and Grenada. According to the survey that PAHO conducted some years ago, unfortunately, Caribbean region has shown one of the less developed qualities of care for people living with chronic conditions. That was a reality about six years ago. Since 2010, PAHO has been providing technical support for the country to improve quality of care for chronic diseases. PAHO's intervention to do so only reached health professionals who deal with people suffering with chronic conditions, but according to Kanda, that was not enough. We also observed the gaps and the missing opportunities between health services being provided at primary health care and patients' lack of acceptance 
of living with chronic conditions and the lack of self-efficacy to manage their chronic conditions. One of the possible solutions that we came up with that empower people living with chronic conditions with self-management skills. Then we try out the program developed by Stanford University, United States. The uniqueness of this program is that adult people themselves living with multiple chronic conditions, they are not a health professional, but people living with, with chronic conditions are trained and become leaders in the self-management of their chronic condition in the community. The participants of the workshop who are now considered master trainers will move on to organize activities in their communities to empower those living with chronic conditions. In other news, Dominique and Dr. Carissa Etienne is to receive an honorary Doctor of Science degree from the Council of the University of the West Indies. Etienne is being recognized for spearheading efforts at PAHU and WHO to renew primary health care and to strengthen health systems based on primary health care, promoting integration and improved functioning of health systems. She serves as the director of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. Before that, she was the assistant director general for health systems and services at the World Health Organization, WHO, in Geneva, Switzerland. Her career began as a medical officer at the Princess Margaret Hospital. She elevated to director of primary health care and eventually chief medical officer. She earned her Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery degrees at UWE Jamaica. She's among 11 people who will be presented with the UWE Award. This will be done at UWE graduation ceremonies in St. Kitts, Barbados, Trinidad and Jamaica. Barbadian journalist Richard Anthony Best, Jamaican sprinter Shelley and Fraser Prince, and American actor and human rights activist Danny Glover are part of the honors list. Dr. Etienne's presentation is expected to be at the Barbados Cavill campus on October 15, along with three other awardees. As the country is counting down the weeks to the biggest event during its Creole season, an organization which seeks to promote enabling environments for local entertainers is calling on the relevant authorities to supply the criteria which determines whether or not an artist makes it on the World Creole Music Festival stage. Andrea Louis reports. Country Director for the Dominica Branch of the Caribbean Performing Arts Federation, CPAF, says each year local artists question their non-selection for the lineup. He believes if the organizing body of the WCMF was to make available the criteria to the artists, then this would help to quell discord among the artistic community. Every year, you know, there is a constant debate or there is always a debate as to why this artist or this artist, local artist that is, is not in the lineup. I think the DFC needs to be clear as to what is the selection criteria for these local artists. If it means coming out and um, broadcasting it to the general public, the radio stations, the TV stations, as to what is the selection criteria as to so that all of our musicians, the general public, everybody could have a good understanding as to what is the criteria to get on board this festival. So in that way, I mean, everybody will have an opinion. You cannot stop persons from having an opinion, but then it, I think it would minimize the amount of discussion or debate that goes on yearly. Gregoire believes, though, that the relevant authorities should put mechanisms in place which would allow for local artists to attain the standards to be selected for the main stage event. I think the primary reason for having the festival, the World Music Festival, is to promote and showcase local talent. So in that case, if you, if you tell artists A, B, and C that he is ineligible to, to be selected, then you must now put mechanisms and facilities and whatever it takes you know, to get those artists to the standard that they need to be so that they could be selected. Because if the ultimate goal is to showcase our local talent, then we must not just tell them that, hey, you are not being selected and then do put, does, do not to put nothing in place now from there now to ensure that they improve on their talent and their history so that they could be selected for future years. This year's festival lineup was released on 22nd June. 
However, Chief Executive Officer of the Discover Dominica Authority says there are several features which the Band Selection Committee looks for when choosing acts for the WCMF lineup. Like your catalog, things like your performance, things like relevancy, um, you know, how relevant you are today, uh, whether your catalog goes back to generations and so you have, you have songs, hit songs to perform. And these are some of the things that um, come into play. Now, we're always torn between, you know, the aspect that it's, uh, you know, the world, meaning the international um, um, standards and criteria which we need to meet, and the Creole aspect, um, which um, goes beyond just our language and, and, and locality, but to where people interact and where people meet. Uh, we're always torn between those two, and, um, you know, uh, but we try to make sure that there's a, a, a good percentage of local um, talent available. The DDA official says most of the time they exceed the required number of bands to accommodate local performers. And if that is not possible because there really and truly should only be five acts a night, we stretch it sometimes to six and that's where we get ourselves into, uh, into problems trying to provide more value uh, to, the, to the patrons. There's, over the years we have now developed a stage in the forecourt where there is opportunities for um, people to perform. And um, that is predominantly um, um, utilized for up-and-coming um, artists and artists who were not able to make it onto the main stage. The CEO is saying to local artists that while the criteria is not made public, they should continue to hone their craft and develop their skills for future selection into the World Creole Music Festival lineup. I think the local artists should, um, you know, um, they should be confident that their time will come, if not this year, um, it'll come next year, if not on main stage, maybe in the, in the forecourt. Um, but just continue to hone their craft, um, put out new material, put out, um, make sure that they as an artist are relevant um, and, 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 and you know, their, their craft will come to the attention of the band selection committee. And certainly if you have your, 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 your package, um, certainly can drop it off at the DFC office so we know who and what you are and, and where you're making waves uh, in the entertainment world so that you can be considered. You're watching Channel 5 News. More news after the break. The National Youth Policy to undergo a six-month review in an effort to manage crime, teenage pregnancy and drug use on island. The main aim of the project is to assess the living conditions of young people and to demonstrate their potential while increasing their participation in society. President of the National Youth Council, Senator Jaisaia Benoit, believes the youth need better health care, education and economic situations. In fact, that is the essence of the model of development that Dominica has taken on, which is sustainable development. That is development that meets the needs of a present generation without compromising the ability of a future generation to meet its own needs. How then can we truly expect for young people to be fully empowered if we don't have the proper policy framework in place for them and to facilitate that growth and the passing on the baton so that they can take on the leadership role whenever that opportunity is presented. He commended Chief Youth Development Officer John Roach for bringing forth the policy before the Commonwealth Youth Programme in Barbados. Benoit said that policy documents are not only to be reviewed by leaders in specific offices but needs to be owned by the youth. This youth policy that we are reviewing, it should be owned by the youth of this country. That is to say, you should not expect as a young person under the age of 35 for a policymaker to be more okwa with your youth policy than yourself. We are the ones who should in fact give the most input and we are the ones who in fact should take the most interest in this process. The process is still very young. As Mr. Roach indicated, it will be the review of the policy will be conducted over a six month period. And so that means that there is ample time for us to get on board those of us who have not heard about the review process so far. Meanwhile, representing the Minister for Youth was Honorable Kelva Daru. He says resources need to be made available to the youth for teenage pregnancy, health and wellness, crime and drug abuse. The Minister also questioned whether this initiative should lie within the responsibility of the Youth Council or government. 
Does the government have to have a special system in place that we can reach out to these young men who have, who have gone astray? The issue of health and wellness among our young people. We've seen now a trend where our young people, the percentage of obesity of our young people is at an all-time high. Visit the primary schools, and you can see examples there. What systems are we going to put in place through this policy to address youth and obesity? That is very important, because you will find that if our young people are not healthy, it limits their productivity and the contribution they can make towards the development of their country in the future. With approximately two weeks left in the month, Child Fund Caribbean is finalizing its preparation on its departure from Dominica. In July 2015, it was announced that Child Fund Caribbean would be saying farewell to the people of Dominica as its operations on island came to an end. We've had a master phase out plan working with and actually it has an average of 150 steps we've had to take or different processes to close down, to shut down. And uh, that's because to our, our setup is a bit complex with use of local partners. So um, this week we're, we're just finishing some reports like uh, any grant reports, financial reports, um, uh, meeting with lawyers, different things to do with human resources and so on, bank accounts, all the legal uh, aspects of it. Uh, after that, uh, uh, as well, we close our company registration, which takes a little while even after I leave, uh, based on the legal process, uh, close the bank accounts and all these things. So we're urging people to that, people we've paid for things, to cash your checks. Uh, between this week and early next week. Try to cash your checks as soon as possible. Utilizing new methodologies to gain bigger impact plus a decline in financing are the key factors in this global restructuring plan of Child Fund. Child Fund, between late last year and this year, they're closing down six countries actually. Um, so it's uh, the Caribbean, two in Caribbean, uh, Belarus has already closed, um, Angola, well, I'm going to close already, um, but uh, Liberia and in the U.S. actually, because the U.S. had set up almost like ours besides the international office. So they're going to change how they work. And then in the Latin countries, Ecuador, Honduras, all those, they're going to restructure the staffings of national offices, uh, the regional office, and then they're going to change and alternate how they're going to actually operate in country. So the style is going to change and structure is going to change. So they are making those massive changes everywhere. During Child Fund Caribbean's over 30 year history on island, many positive changes have been made across the social landscape. In terms of bigger things like the policy framework of the country, we've had an impact on that, especially in the education sector and the social services sector. Uh, in terms of contributing while we sit on different councils and so on to different policies, laws, different things like that. Um, and then uh, in terms of emergencies, we helped a lot. In terms of health, we had major impact, especially in the earlier years when they had the uh, child nutrition after Hurricane, child malnutrition after Hurricane David. And then when we had to get so many families to get their children immunized, to get the health uh, checked, uh, looking at pregnant mothers, looking at early stimulation. So we really tried our best in terms of uh, not only impacting the individual person, but the settings, the systems around that person. 31st August will be the last day of operations for Child Fund Caribbean in Dominica. And finally, Marpin 2K4 has been making viewing a little more interesting for you viewers. Earlier, marketing executive Chantal Winston sat down with us to highlight two of the offerings which our regular viewers have been commenting on since they were introduced. We are referring to flashback and local vibes. And I am joined now by uh, Mrs. Chantal Winston from our marketing department and uh, she's here with a special mission in mind just to update you and highlight some of the more interesting um, programs that we have here on Channel 5. We've got, case in point, we're going to be talking about a flashback, which is a regular yes, every Wednesday. Yes. And uh, local, local vibes, vibes, which is right. picking up quite a bit of steam I've been following. <laughs> flashback started a while back now, and it's every Wednesday. It's part of the news, and we're urging customers and our subscribers, don't miss it. It's basically Mapping's treasure in terms of archives, bringing you back in time and showcasing what happened back then, you know, what our presenters looked like back then, 
and what happened in terms of activities in Vence in Dominica, right? Uh, in terms of places, you know how we have evolved from certain architectural structures and what we do now, how we are more modernized and these kind of things. So we are asking patrons and subscribers to tune in every Wednesday and, you know, look at flashback. Give your input. If you liked it, you know, go on our Facebook page. We have a mapping Facebook page and leave your comments. Or give us a call at the office and tell us what you like about Flashback or what you would like us to look for. Besides the history lesson people get watching Flashback, they're fascinated by what people look like. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, yes. it's a vast difference. And for those of you who are desiring to find this special spot for Lime, Local Vibes got you covered. Everybody is focused on the capital, Roso, and you don't have so much of a variety in Roso. But leave Roso and go outside of Roseau, spread, spread your <laughs> wings, and trust me, the places that local vibes cover, it's amazing. I mean, the experience for me, I've never known some of the places that we have visited, and it's really, really nice. Uh, we visited this particular bar in Good Hope, Archil's Bar, and the, the welcoming was so amazing, and the fish, and the food, and the people, and the music. That's what I find interesting from the last one I saw. The, the, the way people interact with each other is so Right, it is so. so yes, yes. It's I a community. Like to, right, I right. I told you guys that. As well. Right. So, so we're, we're, we're asking the viewers to turn in to Channel 13 every Thursday at 7 p.m. and log on and look at local vibes. It's what's in, in terms of entertainment, in terms of fashion, in terms of what to do, what to eat. And you it's amazing. Pack into, into we it. pack a lot into it. Uh, for the, the musical people, if you want your music video to be featured in Local Vibes, just give us a call at the office or we have an email, localvibes at mapping2k4.com and you can send us the information and we can contact you then. So people who have um, uh, hotspots, they want us to... Yes, they uh, want us to feature their business places. Same thing goes. Send us an email, call us into the office, our marketing department will... Definitely take your phone call and, of course, come to feature your business place. So that's what's up with mapping so far. And, of course, we know the Olympics is up. We are showing that as well. And many, many, many other events coming up. Stay tuned for the World Career Music Festival. We have a lot in store on that one. That means she will be back to update us on <laughs> new developments here at um, Mapping 2K4. Thank you very much for watching. You can see flashback in our Wednesday night newscast right after sports and local vibes Thursdays at 7 p.m. on Channel 13. That's news. Kenny Williams is next with your sports highlights. Put on your gloves now and let's check out the boxing scene where local athletes are getting ready for competition, but this time outside of Dominica. Recently, the Top Glove Boxing Club hosted a boxing extravaganza where regional and local athletes were on show, giving the sport much needed publicity. Right now we are training for a competition because um, it looked like we might, live in, we might be leaving Dominica to go to Trinidad and also St. Martin. But we have a little problem, we have a little hiccups, so we are trying to see what can be done. We talk about finance because we have to pay our passage to go to um, the countries to fight. Um, right now, we're trying to see what, what can be done. On the other hand, um, the guys have been training real hard since after the competition. It's very close. One is on the 30th of August and the other is on the 3rd of September. So we might have to leave one country, fight, and then go to the next country the other day. But um, as I said, I'm still waiting to see what's happening. We're actually juggling around to see how we can get the money and stuff like that. Joseph says he has gotten positive reviews post the boxing extravaganza part one and feels motivated to do it again. Well, actually, the public have been crazy because they're asking for the next one. But in boxing, you have to plan it very well and you have to make sure that everything is in place. You just can't have one very successful and rush to the next one and not successful. So you have to make sure you take your time and make everything go as you want to plan. Um, it wasn't because of me that 
the competition went out so good. I think it's a whole lot of people, the Jolly's Pharmacy and many other citizens in Dominica. I give a date for the next competition, which is December 26th, which is Boxing Day. So we're going to make Boxing Day be a boxing, real a boxing day. Um, we plan to have at least two international fighters and about four regional fighters and the rest will be local fighters. So the next time around, this competition is going to be really, really better than the first one. And everywhere I walk on the street for the past couple of weeks, everybody's talking about when we're going to have the next one. That was so good, they can't miss the next one. But I just let them know the next one will be on the 26th of December, and they can't miss it. Because as I said, we're going, to have, we're going to have foreign fighters of international and also of regional. The Boxing Extravaganza Part 1 was held in aid of the Ecuadorian earthquake victims. My job was to put things in place, have the fight, collect the money, and give it to the person who was in charge is at the state college, so I had to give it to the relevant authority, which we did. In cricket, following weeks of intense training, the sports division has selected a team of 16 players to represent Dominica in a series of under-13 cricket matches in St. Lucia from August 19 to 25. The competition is the culmination of the sports division's junior cricket program for the last academic year, which began in September 2015 with the coaching caravan. Following the competitive stage of the program in June, 107 boys were selected for post-competition training at three venues. Venues. The number was further reduced before the final selection of 16. The team reads Mikhail Revere, S. Anselm, Jed Joseph, Clemenson Leblanc, Majid Peltier, Jeremiah Joseph, Tyrese Leblanc, Ajani Tavernier, Stefan Pascal, C.J. Charles, Sherwin Ogiest, Ashton Ogiest, Neo Davis, Shaheem Caesar, and Yawani Regis. The team will leave Dominica on August 19 and will be accompanied by manager Kevin James coach Thomas Kentish, and the trainer-slash-assistant coach Raymond Kazemi. We will bring you more on that story in a future sportscast. We move now to the basketball court to check out action in the 2016 DABA playoffs. On Thursday, Tigers and Kelva Daru are booked to contend at the Trafalgar Hardcourt from 7, followed by Fast Cash Prowlers against Detroit Blazers at 9. Meantime, Channel 5 Sports spoke with Prowlers head coach, who says he's taking things in strides. I'm going to look at one game at a time. I'm not going to rush and say, well, this, that, and what, right? Um, our first game is going to be tomorrow night against the defending champion Blazers, the team I always respect and have respect for. The players and our players are very, very close, you know? But um, when we get on the court, it's a, different, it's a different thing. We are going to play to win, they're coming to play to win. So I wish that the, 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 the team who want it more will go and win, which I think is high time that we pull up our socks because two years we've been in the finals and um, we haven't got the, the, the championship. So this year we want to get to the final, not get to the final alone, but get in the championship. However, Blazers captain Lester Langley says he's expecting a good game from Prowlers. We expect the Prowlers to come out and play because we know that for the past two years we have been in the finals in the finals with us. And yes, we have to take him out successfully in the two years, but then he says his team has a strategy for Thursday's game. We know that because we are very big, the strength is on them to win, and once we can get our bodies in front of the and the ring, we know that we have more, much, much more of a bigger chance to win. Get for the series because that's not will be the key in this series for us. Back with more cricket, where West Indies will face India for their fourth test match in Trinidad on Thursday. Previously, the Windies went down to India by 237 runs in their third test match. Meantime, the West Indies team manager Joel Garner feels players from the region have promise but don't work hard enough. He says having longer innings and sizable partnerships could help improve the Windies' chances for their ongoing test series against India. Garner said the lure of T20 may be hampering West Indies' young players from coming through the junior ranks. While Garner clarified that he wasn't discouraging players from playing T20, he wanted revenues earned from T20 matches to be invested in the grassroots and for the players to be able to play more first-class cricket. 
Next up, following a drawn-out delay of matches in the National Volleyball League, the competition will resume next Wednesday. The game between Flo Wolfpack and DB's Young Vets was postponed due to a request by the Wolfpack team, citing their players had suffered a number of injuries and even further because of athletes' participation in outside competition. Also on the cards for the league are a second division game and the finals. Dates for those games will be provided when available. And in football news, more action from the RC Football League to resume on the weekend. In their recent performance, musical trucking play for United defeated Comets Pack 3-2. And in the battle of the Grand Four teams, the veterans beat the young boys 5-3. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Be sure to join us tomorrow. Welcome to another interesting segment of Flashback where we take you back into our archives. Augustina Henderson was paralyzed from waist down after falling from the first floor of her home in Granby. In 1999, businesses including Mapping 2K4 took the initiative to assist Henderson by making donations which would put an ease on her financial commitments. Flashback is back in Grand Bay today visiting Augustina, yeah. who recently celebrated her 50th birthday, and again, we bring gifts. <laughs> we are happy to know that Augustina is still with us and in high spirits. Yeah. Let's take a page of positivity out of her book. How has life been? Uh, life was um, bad in the first, let's say, 10 years, 15 years, but now it is all right with me. I'm just like a bird on a tree. What has changed? Um, my, my, I'm um, sitting down, bathing myself, putting my pampas, going and cook, sweep inside the house. I do a lot of things. Yes. And I can say, praise God. I can sit on my own. I can turn. Yeah. I can go on the bed, go on the wheelchair. But before somebody died to do all those things for me. But now I can do it on my own. And I thank the Lord. I heard you had your 50th birthday party yeah, a few days ago. Oh, that was a surprise. That was a surprise. They did not tell me nothing about that. Well, yeah. happy birthday from thank Mapping you, to K4. You, thank you very much. And we'd also like to make an offer for you to yeah. remember years ago in 1999, Mapping yeah. yeah. did give you a gift to ease your financial commitment. Yes. And here is another gift. This one is for your 50th birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you to the manager and staff of Mapping for helping me with my mapping, so I haven't got to pay mapping for how many years. So I'm still telling them, thank you, thank you very much. And I'd like to say thank you to all those who helped me during the 20 years. I am Janik Delma Samuel. See you next week. <laughs> the Weather Report is next. Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Coretta Joseph. A tropical wave was the dominant feature across the region today, resulting in mostly partly cloudy to cloudy skies throughout the coast of today. Visible satellite imagery showed low-level clouds over Dominica throughout the coast of the day. Radar imagery indicated some scattered showers across the lesser and today's. Conditions for tonight, partly cloudy to occasionally cloudy with a few scattered showers. Tomorrow, Fear to partly cloudy skies with a few brief scattered showers. Some hazy and breezy conditions are also expected. Sea conditions tomorrow, moderate in open water with waves up to 7 feet. Taking a look at the next three days, similar weather patterns can be expected on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Fear to partly cloudy skies with a few brief scattered showers. Some hazy and breezy conditions also expected tomorrow, Thursday. And across the region tomorrow, fair to partly cloudy skies with a few scattered showers over the northern and central portions of the island chain. Meanwhile, cloudy skies with a few scattered showers expected over the extreme southern portion. On the international scene, cloudy skies in New York Partly cloudy skies in Miami, London, and Beijing, and some possible thunderstorm activity in Caracas. 
The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.51 a.m. and set at 6.27 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Managing non-communicable diseases, a major financial burden for the Ministry of Health. Practical outcomes expected from a six-month-long review of the National Youth Policy. And Dr. Carissa Etienne to receive an honorary Doctor of Science degree from UWE. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com and access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I'm Idona John Baptist. To all our viewers around the world, we thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.